everybody. How's it going? I am your host, Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC3 at Quicksurf Internet Studios. The Geekinator is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com. Check out all the other technology-related shows over there. And uh, subscribe to our show and show your support. Um, you can find the subscription links online over at quicksurf.com. In the sh in the uh, show notes for each and every episode, I have a variety of ways of subscribing to the show. So with that, let's go ahead and get into the uh, cool stuff for this episode. Starting off over at CRN.com, Samsung partners think the new Galaxy Tab S tablet can give Apple's iPad a run for its money. Samsung's unveiling of its Galaxy Tab S tablet has many of its channel partners impressed and excited. The Galaxy Tab S, unveiled Thursday at Samsung's Tab in Two Color event in New York City, is more than capable of taking on Apple's iPad with comparable features, competitive pricing, and a high-quality display, partners told CRN. If anybody can overtake Apple, it's Samsung but it'll be tougher to overtake them in the United States, uh, said David Ruckman, CTO uh, at powersolution.com, a Hohokus, New Jersey-based uh, Samsung partner. They have name recognition. They have the devices, specifically the phone. If they carry it over to the tablet, I don't see why it wouldn't catch on, except for the fact that in terms of hardware, Apple is kind of the gold standard. Um you know, I have a full-size iPad. I also have an iPad mini with a retina display. And I got to tell you, hardware-wise, it would be pretty difficult to improve upon the hardware without adding a bunch of gee whiz, whiz bang type uh, physical features, more buttons, indicators, and all that other geeky stuff that, you know, geek engineers geek out on, but, you know, the average consumer doesn't really care about. So... Uh, you know, I, I don't know. It, it'll be kind of interesting to see what Samsung, uh, to, you know, what they can bring to bear. But at best, they can probably match Apple beat for beat uh, in terms of raw physical hardware. And at worst, you know, they can kind of try. <laughs> we'll see. From uh, ArsTechnica.com, Google Fit to curate steps, calories, heart rate, and other biometric data. A report suggests Google is planning a health kit and SAMI competitor. Uh, Google is planning to release a new product called Google Fit that will aggregate health data from various devices and apps, according to a report Thursday from Forbes. Fit will use available APIs to pull biometric information together into one place but it's unclear whether it will be a standalone app or part of an Android operating system. So I'm going to be keeping an eye on this because for those of you who may or may not have noticed, I, I am a Fitbit owner and user and, uh, you know, having biometric uh, information or biometric data is, is awfully handy, especially when it does things like track your sleep. With regards to my Fitbit, the only thing I really wish it would do more is capture more types of data instead of, uh, you know, having an accelerometer where it can do intelligent things like monitor your sleep and how many steps a day and how far you've traveled in a day. But, uh, you know, with that being said, if there is some generally open hardware out there that you can do that and it's as simple as, a, you know, a bracelet or something of that nature... I don't. I, I would have no problem trying it out, and maybe even comparing it to the Fitbit. The Fitbit Flex is pretty useful. Um, you know, you can wear it, and you don't ever have to take it off. And if you'll notice, mine's got. I don't know if you can see it on the band, but my band's got quite a bit of wear on it. I've had it for three or four months now, and I can totally see uh, replacing the band after six months to a year, simply because the the band is is rubber and it's it's going to wear and break and 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 Fitbit does sell, you know, replacement parts like the little uh the little tab here. I can totally see that breaking cuz it's, you know, it's uh, one of those uh you know, it's got some tangs here that uh, will 
that can break off. Um, you know, the band itself, I can totally see the holes that the, t that the tanks go through. At some point, the part that you, uh, you know, put it through the most will, will at some point break off. This part right here is a, a stress point for sure. Um, that's kind of where they put the little display. Um, so it should be pretty interesting. I, I'm, like I said, I'm curious to see what, uh, curious to see what, you know, Google can come up with, you know, I mean, Fitbit's not the only company out there, obviously that can, you know, that does this sort of thing, but still, it should be pretty interesting to see. Uh, I'm just curious, you know, what, what, uh, what they can bring to bear you know i'd be willing to try it out as long as i don't have to as long as it's open enough that i don't have to have uh you know uh, an android phone or something of that nature which is one of the reasons why i have the fitbit because i don't have to have an android phone or an iphone or a windows phone i don't even have to have a phone so uh that's pretty cool all right, from uh, WashingtonPost.com, Iraq tries to censor social media to disrupt ISIS communication, but its success is limited. The Iraqi government moved Friday to block access to Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube in a bid to disrupt the social media tools deployed by insurgents as they have swept through the country in a bold drive toward Baghdad. But the incentive ran, to, ran into a hard reality of warfare in the 21st century, Losing physical ground means losing control of cyberspace as well because cyberspace is rooted in real-life physical space. You have to put network switches and internet peering points in physical space, and if you lose control of the space that those devices are living in, you have lost control of those devices. It's a reality. So, uh, pretty interesting, to, nonetheless. From uh, eastidahonews.com, Apple to replace European adapters in an exchange program. Tech giant Apple is set to replace some European iPhone 5-watt USB adapters due to a safety risk. The company has announced Friday, today, the day we're recording this, uh, the device may, which which may overheat, is used for the iPhone 3GS, the iPhone 4, the iPhone 4S, uh, shipped from October 2009 to September 2012. Uh, they were sold as a standalone accessory, so if you bought one of those as a standalone accessory, you can get it replaced as part of the European Replacement Program if you're in Europe. As part of the exchange program, Apple will allow customers to bring the products to a retail store or a participating Apple authorized service provider where the device will be disposed of. So you can identify the affected devices through specific colorings. The device in question will have the letters CE in solid gray on its label and features uh, model A1300, a redesigned device which does not need to be exchanged is stamped with a model A1400s with the CE with the letters CE outlined in gray. So take a look at your devices and see if you need to exchange any of those devices. You, you would very well may. Again, this is for European uh, users only. So here in the US, uh, you may not necessarily uh, need to do anything. From the spec.com, Beats goes after runners, gym goers with new Bluetooth earbuds. This is kind of cool. Headphone maker Beats Electronics is launching a $200 pair of wireless earbuds that the company says would survive six days of sweaty, hour-long workouts without needing a recharge. That's pretty awesome. Six days? That's pretty cool. Athletes are already among the most prominent users of the earmuff-like single-side cord Beats headphones. It's, a, it's hard to walk into a gym or watch an NBA game without seeing someone's head adorned with one of the products that have propelled the Culver City, California company to the top of the premium headphone market. Apple has said it plans to acquire Beats for $3 billion in a transaction that could close by September. So, pretty interesting. Um, I'm curious to see what they sound like because historically Bluetooth audio has been not 
so great. I mean, passable and maybe in a gym environment, it's perfectly adequate and it gives you, you know, the wireless capabilities so that you don't have a cord that's getting tangled up while you're doing your workout. That may be adequate uh, for, uh, you know, for that environment. But I'm still curious uh, what the sound quality is. Um, you know, it may not be premium, super high fidelity, but it may be adequate for a gym environment. So it should be pretty interesting. From CNET.com, BMW adds in-dash GoPro support. We test it on the track. BMW and GoPro are teaming up to bring support for action cameras to the dashboard. Dashboards are the company's latest cars. To try it out, we headed out to the long straights at Road America in a BMW M3. Pretty interesting. Uh, the action cam market is huge and growing. Driving GoPro from a little startup with some funky cameras to a company on the verge of a big IPO. Extreme sports of all sorts have created this popularity, but the cultural phenomenon of the track day has uh, had a big hand in it. The track day is when people bring their cars or motorcycles to a race circuit and drive in circles as fast as they can, hopefully without crashing into anything or blowing their motors along the way. Some audio manufacturers are starting to capitalize on this, adding tele telemetry systems to their cars that record metrics and the like while their owners strut their stuff on the track. So of those, you have a performance data recorder in the 2015 Corvette. Uh, however, BMW, as we stated, is taking a slightly different approach. Uh, BMW and GoPro have worked together to add support for the BMW connected to the GoPro app. This lets you get a live stream from your camera as well as tweaking exposure settings without having to tap, 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 tap on the camera's little button. So pretty cool, um, you know, kind of limited usefulness and functionality. You do kind of have to have a BMW that supports doing this and a GoPro and, you know, obviously if you own a BMW, you have money and probably aren't listening to me, but still, nonetheless, it's pretty interesting. From toptechnews.com, why am I being displayed a giant ad that I just don't care about? Uh, Microsoft, <laughs> sorry, Microsoft fights an order to disclose email stored abroad. Microsoft is by, fighting back attempts by the U.S. government to access customers' emails stored in its Irish data centers. The warrant was issued last December by a magistrate judge in New York as part of a drug trafficking investigation. Microsoft, which appealed the warrant and lost in April, is again beginning legal proceedings saying that because the information was stored overseas, they were beyond the reach of a domestic search warrant. The government cannot seek and a court cannot issue a warrant allowing federal agents to break down the doors of Microsoft's Dublin facility. Microsoft's lawyers argued that Congress had never authorized U.S. courts to issue warrants that reach outside of U.S. territory. So they are debating the interpretation of the term warrant in the Electronic Communications Privacy Act. The Redmond-based company said that the court argued that it was issuing a hybrid between a warrant and a subpoena and not a search warrant. Microsoft contends that courts in the U.S. cannot issue warrants for information held outside the country and in subpoenas, the onus is on the target of the investigation to hand over the information, not Microsoft. So, uh, pretty interesting. I'm curious to see how this plays out because this could mean that if Microsoft succeeds, we will see a fairly significant uh, amount of data centers being moved outside of the U.S. over the longer term. So I'm curious. I'm pretty uh, sure they won't succeed, but... Time will tell. So anyway, uh, that will do it for this edition of The Geekinator. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. For those of you who have, thank you so much for subscribing. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. I'll see you then. Bye.